Well, welcome. You tuned in to uh, Eye on Africa. I'm Rochelle Ferguson Buyahi. These are the top stories. DR Congo and Ugandan officials confirm Ugandan soldiers been killed in clashes around Lake Edward, which borders both countries elsewhere in DR Congo. The UN says thousands have, have been displaced in an unrelated conflict. We take you to Limpopo National Park, one of the largest conservation areas in the world, where the presence of several communities is posing a threat to wildlife. Plus, rich and authentic taste from the continent pour into the French capital this weekend for the We Eat Africa Festival. We talk to organiser Basilian Bo, plus chefs Coco Fatty Reinhardt and Georgiana Vio. But first to our top story, DR Congo and Ugandan officials say a Ugandan soldier has been killed in clashes around Lake Edward, which borders both countries. Another Ugandan soldier and two Congolese were also reportedly wounded in the unrest. Congolese officials saying the two navies exchanged gunfire with Ugandan forces, which were attacked by unknown gunmen. Uganda saying they were on a routine patrol when unidentified gunmen opened fire. Well, meanwhile, both countries saying they're planning a joint military operation against a Ugandan rebel group. In unrelated news, the uh, UN says thousands of children have been reported missing as the conflict in uh, DR Congo's Tanganyika province worsens. Over 600,000 people have fled due to intercommunal conflict. More Julian reports. Augustine Feza has steeled herself for the worst. She hasn't seen her six-year-old daughter in over a year. The rebels come into our villages, they take our children, they rape the girls and cut them up in small pieces with machetes. There's no hope. I'll never see my daughter again. Augustine fled fighting in the DRC's Tanganyika province between various ethnic groups and the army. She's now living in a camp for internally displaced people in the provincial capital, Kalemi. She's one of many anxious and grieving parents here. Elizabeth lost two daughters. She spent an entire year looking for them. I'm in pain. My heart is hurting. I can't sleep. My body's in pain. Life is hopeless. Who will get my children back for me? Ndiba Kaiti counts herself among the lucky few. Her five teenage daughters were held captive for months in the bush. But with help from aid groups, she found them and negotiated their release. When I found them, they were in a bad state. They were so thin, their feet were wounded, their skin had changed, their eyes were filled with sadness. But the day I found my children, I was happy. The UN Refugee Agency estimates there are thousands of missing children, and it's working to identify and reunite them with their parents. Well, time now to bring you a look at uh, some other news that's uh, making headlines on the continent. Here in France, a court has upheld two life sentences for two former Rwandan mayors for their role in the massacre of uh, hundreds of ethnic Tutsis during the country's 1994 genocide. Octavian Ngenza and Tito Barahira were having launched an appeal after being found guilty in 2016 of crimes against humanity and genocide on their village. The pair aged 60 and 67 respectively have now five days to decide whether to appeal that ruling. Officials in Cameroon say at least 30 people have been killed after a bus crash on the road linking the political capital Yunde with the western city of Bafusam. The bus reportedly drove into a river in Buturo town. That was early this Friday. Two survivors are receiving treatment in Yaoundé. The cause of the crash is unknown, but in the past, similar accidents have been linked to poor road safety. And in a unanimous decision, Nigeria's top court has dismissed all outstanding charges against the Senate president, Bukala Saraki. Saraki, Nigeria's third most senior politician, stood accused of falsely declaring his assets while he stood as a state governor between 2003 and 2011. A uh, Code of Conduct tribunal cleared Saraki of the charges. That was back in June 2017, but the government had appealed that ruling. Next, Limpopo National Park is one of the largest uh, conservation areas in the world, situated between uh, South Africa, Zimbabwe and Mozambique. But in its Mozambican park, the presence of several communities is posing a threat to wildlife. These recently recruited rangers are being put through their paces in Mozambique's Limpopo National Park. 
They will help spearhead efforts to combat poaching on the border with South Africa, where wildlife regularly crosses from Kruger National Park. Poachers often use villages on the Mozambique side as bases for their operations. Recently, we seized a high-caliber weapon, but the three poachers managed to escape. Only seven kilometers away from the village of Mavotse, which is in the reserve. To combat poaching and increase conservation efforts, local populations are gradually being displaced along the reserve's borders. Three communities have already moved, five more will follow. Next on the list is Bingo Village, with authorities promising residents a better quality of life outside the park. A 60-kilometer-long barrier separates the heart of the park from the surrounding area to stop wild animals from wandering too close to nearby villages. Elephants and buffaloes can trample crops, while lions can attack livestock. More than 200 brick houses are being built in this buffer zone as part of efforts to relocate the bingo community. This project aims to limit conflict between humans and animals, but it will also open up the park to tourists and encourage the development of our country. The effects of poaching and the presence of locals mean that animal sightings are rare here, but poaching is going down. In 2017, only two elephants were killed in the park, compared to 16 two years earlier. And finally, for any foodies watching, uh, some of you might have heard of the We Eat Africa uh, Festival. It's the first ever festival of African cuisine right here in the French capital. It's happening uh, tomorrow. What can you get out of the festival? Well, as well as tasting authentic flavours from across the continent, there'll be conferences, there'll be workshops, exhibitions, you name it. It's all going to be happening at the We Eat Africa Festival. I'm joined uh, here in the studio by Basile Mbo, who's one of the organisers of We Eat Africa. Thank you for joining us. Also, uh, Chef Coco Fatty Reinhardt, if I can call you Chef Coco. Much easier. And uh, Georgiana, if you're also a chef, thank you yep. very much for speaking to us. If we start with you, uh, Basili, what's the inspiration behind this We Eat Africa Festival? The inspiration, I mean, it's very simple. Um, we Eat Africa Festival is organised by Afro Cooking Magazine. And with the magazine, we've been organising some uh, culinary workshop throughout the past year. And it was so successful, people enjoyed it and even people that we didn't expect would enjoy this and would be interested in the African cuisine. So we say, oh, there's something to do there. There's a need to know more about the African cuisines. So that's why we, uh, we came up with this idea of organising the festival. OK, so a need for people to understand more about African cuisine. Uh, Chef Georgiana, what, what was interesting for you about getting involved in this? Um, the most important thing for me is to, you know, um, get people more people know that uh, we don't usually we speak about one African cuisine, and the, now the goal is to to bring people to to consider the fact that uh, we have many countries in Africa, and we have um, uh, each uh, different cuisine in each country of Africa. There are different types of cuisine, like there is French cuisine, Italian cuisine, Chinese cuisine. You have uh, South African cuisine. Benin cuisine, Nigerian cuisine, etc. Benin cuisine, the, perhaps one of your favourites. Because, yeah, because, because <laughs> I'm from Benin. And... You'll tell us more about that, Chef Ge uh, Georgiana. Uh, Chef Coco, if I come to you, you're going to be doing one of the, w the workshops at uh, We Eat Africa. You were telling us before about something that you're going to be cooking on the day at one of those workshops. Yeah, so uh, my all input in this uh, festival, I just wanted to show that actually African cuisine can be also glamorous because it's one of those cuisine that have been overlooked for so many time, for so long, just because it have that connotation of it being something massive, something uh, unhealthy, while fat. it is unhealthy, something very fat, you mm. know. Uh, so what I will be doing tomorrow, I'll do, for example, one of the dessert, which is a kind of a redesign, a Congolese dish, which is a small mikate, that uh, they eat uh, with the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be doing those small fritter, but serve it with the peanut butter ice cream. Uh, like I will do something with the plantain uh, and crab that is eaten in, uh, in Ivory Coast. Yeah, so I'll make a small croquette with it and then serve it with a little tomato concassé. And just to show that 
we can be creative as well in Africa. I think you've got the viewers' mouths watering already. <laughs> it so sounds delicious. Uh, Basile, if I come back to you, you say that Paris is the perfect city for this festival. Tell us more. Yeah, because Paris, when we um, speak about gastronomy, about food, good food, we, Paris always come up in our mind. And uh, I live in Paris, so I really want this, uh, we as a team, wanted this festival to, uh, to be there because we want to, uh, to put in the mind of people that African cuisine can be glamorous, as you said. Mm -hmm. So putting this you know, in Paris gives us this, uh, yeah. this angle that we want to put for this festival. Georgiana, Coco, uh, Chef Coco touched on it. Can African cuisine be healthy? Of course. Yes, of course, because uh, the idea in most of the... Um, uh, idea, uh, the um, come on, yeah. <laughs> No, but the, the idea, many people think that it's fat because we only use oil, fat, or like with a lot of pepper or whatever. Sometimes when people come in my restaurant, they just ask when they see me, they say, okay, is it uh, like uh, something uh, hot? Is your food hot? And uh, usually I answer, because, why? Because I'm black. <laughs> uh, black people don't, uh, all the cuisine in Africa are not... So you hot. want to dispel those myths about African food. It can be healthy, it healthy can be non-spicy. it can And tasty. And uh, various, you know, because we have a lot of Variety. products. Uh, we don't only eat uh, chicken and uh, uh, banana. Okay. <laughs> We've got very little time. It's such a shame. I'd love to talk more about food with you. Uh, Chef Coco, if we just... One thing from you, what should people expect tomorrow when they come very quickly? They should really expect something different. Uh, the whole idea about this festival, especially my involvement, I wanted to make sure that we show Africa on another angle. And if us Africans don't do it, nobody will do it for us. OK, thank you very much. And just to remind our viewers, that is happening uh, in Paris at Boulogne-Biancourt okay. on Saturday. You're up to date. Thanks for watching Our Africa.